Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video and this is my first video of 2018 and to this video I will be going over my experience with the Elephone S8 which I had for almost a month. It would be a month on the 3rd of January. This was highly requested in my Bernie Mix 2 video so here it is, let's begin. So you get a simple white box and inside rests the phone. So I'll just leave this here while we take a look at what else comes included. So it comes with a transparent TPU case which is nice to see. It also comes with a USB type C which is very welcome. Then here is a European power brick which outputs 5 volts to 2 amps. Something else that comes included that may upset most of you is that it has a USB dongle because the phone has no headphone jack. The fact that there's no headphone jack might upset you now that they included the adapter. Now let's move on to the phone. So right away you get the cold feel of glass. The back appears to not pick up as much fingerprints as I was expecting and it's very reflective. The sides have a plastic frame that connects both the front and rear glass. While the front has a larger chamfer, the back does not so it feels sharper when you run your fingers along that side. The phone measures at 8.1mm thick and weighs in at 180 grams. Since the phone is a slab of glass I would recommend using the clear case that comes included to help protect your phone. On the bottom chin of the phone rests the fingerprint reader and the front facing camera since the top has no bezels to house it there. On the bottom here is where you will find the speaker grills. There is a single firing speaker which is housed underneath the right grill and the left one is just for show. Right in the center is a USB type C port for charging and data transfer. Carrying over to the right side of the phone you will see something reminiscing of the Google Pixel phone and that is the color button. The power button is hot pink which looks cool giving it a bit of character but hot pink is not everyone's color so maybe going for a more general color like red would have been a little bit better for everyone. Right above that is the volume rocker. On the other side you will find the dual nano sim tray slot but no slot for expandable storage. Now moving on to the display. The phone is rocking a 6 inch 2560 by 1440p display which is vibrant and sharp and overall looks amazing. The display is one of the brightest ones that I have seen on a budget smartphone. This makes viewing the phone at most angles readable. The only slight con on this very bright display is that it doesn't get dim enough at night. But it comes with night mode so it filters out the blue light that makes it hard for you to fall asleep so that's good and you can customize how strong you want it to be in the settings. You can also tune the display under mirror vision found in the display settings when choosing user mode. You can change various things like contrast, saturation, picture brightness and sharpness. You can also turn on clear motion which makes movements look less blurry which is very pleasing to look at when you're watching videos. The fingerprint reader on the Elephone S8 is as quick as the fingerprint reader on the Vernon MX2. Now moving over to the sound quality, the speakers sound pretty good. It has a nice clean sound. I start hearing distortion at about 90% and it gets surprisingly loud enough to enjoy watching videos on a noisy day. And now here's a quick audio sample. So the phone is quite big but I can still manage to grip it and use it one handed for a bit but for those with smaller hands you will struggle using it one handed. I would have really liked it if it had an 18 to 9 display. Here's a quick look at it compared to the Vermi Mix 2 which is more manageable one handed since they both share the Xiaomi Mix 2 design. The awesome thing about this phone compared to the other two budget phones I reviewed a couple weeks ago is that it works on T-Mobile's network in the US. I am getting 4G on it and it has been working great. Calls and texts go through quickly. The call quality is good and I didn't encounter any issues there. This also works with Metro PCS with 4G since it is running on T-Mobile's network. In the description I will leave the network bands that this phone is compatible with. Now GPS on this phone is good for the most part but not always accurate as it sometimes pinpoints you a house off or so. Now heading over to the performance, the speed of opening apps and switching between them is very fast and that has to do with the phone having the animation speed at 0.5 instead of the traditional one time speed. You can change that in the developer setting if you prefer to see the animation over faster transitions. The phone has 4GB of RAM and 64GB of onboard storage and packs a Helio X25 chipset. The phone is very responsive making the gaming experience feel pretty good when not playing very demanding games. My two goal games are Unkilled, Dead Trigger 2 and Osfall 8 as well as Balloon Towers Defense and the phone flies through them all. The phone doesn't get hot when gaming but does get suddenly warm from time to time. The phone got a score of 868 on the single core and got a 3680 score on the multi core score for those who are curious about that. The phone has a 4000mAh battery powering this beast which is one of the reasons why the phone is thick. I am getting an average of 4 hours of on screen time and on a heavy day 3 hours of on screen time. A low on screen time is expected since the battery has to power the very bright 2K screen, a trade off for the beautiful display. Whether that is worth it is totally up to you. But if you are a really low user with brightness all the way down you can probably get about 4 hours and a half on this. 
Jumping into the settings, there are a couple of gestures you can turn on, like double pressing the power button to jump into the camera, or swiping with three fingers on the screen for a screenshot. The phone, right out of the box, does not have the navigation on-screen button, so you have to navigate around using the fingerprint reader. But you can enable them under the navigation settings, which I did. Moving on to the camera, the phone has a single rear 21 megapixel shooter with an f2.0 aperture instead of having the dual camera setup, which we've seen on a lot of budget phones. But where the second one doesn't really work or is fake. It's great to see that they focus on one here. The front has a 13 megapixel camera that is good for video calls and selfies. It comes with a front flash to capture your selfies in the dark with three levels of brightness so that's something to get excited for you selfie lovers. The interface looks outdated but easy to use and the rear camera's picture quality is great. You can easily go into the settings here and turn on the zero shutter delay for it to take pictures almost right away when you click the shutter button. You can also adjust things like the ISO and in the general settings the white balance, exposure and so on. On the image properties, you can adjust the sharpness, hue, and saturation to make your pictures pop more. The camera also comes with HDR and you have to keep it still when taking pictures with it for a bit, but not as long as on other budget smartphones. Before moving on to the video quality, let's take a look at some pictures that I took with this. The pictures look very detailed and quite vibrant, with a good amount of depth of field to blur the background and making the foreground pop out more. So another cool thing on this phone besides the 2K screen is that it can record 4K at 24 frames per second. An issue that I did run on this phone is that when playing back 4K footage on this phone, it looked kind of choppy. And a bigger issue is that I couldn't view them on my laptop when transferring them. I tried it on several computers and it didn't work. You can convert the file from MP4 to AVI and it works. This is most likely not the case on every unit since I've seen others upload 4K footage capture on this phone without mentioning any issues. So the autofocus is pretty slow and when you tap to focus it takes up a few seconds to focus at times. But once you got it focused you will get some very sharp video except on mine. Sometimes it looks choppy and other times it looks good. So if you are looking for a phone with a strong camera for pictures and a good overall performance at a budget then I would recommend it. But in video not so much since I did run into some issues there. Alright so this concludes my review and thank you guys for watching and feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. And I'll talk to you on the next one.